This video goes through a relatively simple example of model selection for choosing a forecasting model. In particular, we'll be deciding between an autoregressive model with one lag or with two lags. In particular, we'll be looking at two different information criteria, the AIC and the BIC. Now there's lots of other information criteria, and there's also lots of model selection procedures that are not information criteria, um, but a lot of them have a similar tension between trying to fit the in-sample data well, but not overfit and end up fitting the noise, which can give us poor out of forecast sample, uh, sorry, out of sample forecasts. So in this particular case, we're assuming we have a sample of size 50, and later we'll need to use the natural log of that, which is 3.9 approximately. And the AIC and BIC both have this structure that captures that, that tension that I mentioned earlier. Um, and I'll say too, in practice, you know, we can just run a built-in function, an R or Stata, um, but hopefully with having a concrete example can help develop your understanding and intuition for um, how this idea works. So both, of, both the AIC and BIC have this T log SSR term, where SSR stands for sum of squared residuals, and that will be larger if there's a worse fit to the data, and if there's a better fit, it will be smaller, closer to, um, well, the SSR will be closer to zero. Uh, there's also other formulations of AIC and BIC for different types of models, but this is the one we are using here. So what we need to do first is fill in this table up in the top right, and then we'll be able to plug those numbers into the formulas down below. So I've already filled in that fit column, T log SSR, and now we can fill in the penalties. Um, so, I guess continuing my earlier sentence, the second term in the AIC and the BIC are these penalties for how big or flexible the model is. So the idea is if we add some penalty for flexibility, that will sort of stop us from just using the most flexible possible model and overfitting and getting really bad out-of-sample predictions. So here, P captures the flexibility of our model. P plus one is how many parameters we have in our model. Um, and then the uh, AIC has a two, where the BIC has this log T. So in general, the BIC sort of has a stricter penalty on flexibility, which makes it tend to choose uh, smaller models uh, because higher value of AIC or BIC is bad, smaller value is good. So let's see how these numbers work out. So first for the AIC penalty, if P equals 1, then P plus 1 is 2. So the penalty is 2 times 2, or 4. For the BIC, with P equals 1, P plus 1 is again 2. But now 2 times log t, which will be approximately 7.8. And then with p equals 2, the AR model with 2 lags, uh, p plus 1 will be 3, and 2 times 3 is 6 for the AIC penalty. And then p plus 1, or 2 plus 1, uh, times log t is approximately 3 times 3.9, or 11.7. So we can fill 
out the formulas now in the bottom part using those numbers in the table. So we'll look at the AIC first. So we can see the purple 11 goes in there, and then the penalty with P equals 1 is that 4, and then uh, if we add that up, 11 plus 4 is 15 total. So that's the value of the AIC for the P equals 1, or the first order autoregressive model. And similarly for P equals 2, we can fill in the two terms from up in our table. So 8 plus 6, now we get 14. And again, smaller value is better, so 14 is better than 15. So what this means in practice, if we were using the AIC and we got these values, we would want to use the AR2 model, meaning we'd want to go back to our data, fit that AR2 model, and then use that fitted model to generate our out-of-sample forecasts. We can do the same thing now for the BIC. Uh, I'll note in many cases, AIC and BIC will choose the same model. In the cases where they don't, as I mentioned earlier, the BIC tends to choose a smaller model because it has a larger penalty for flexibility. So it's more worried about overfitting. So we can see that if we fill in those terms from the table. So when P equals 1, we get 11 plus 7.8 which is 18.8 um, and then for p equals 2 we get 8 plus 11.7 which is 19.7 so for the BIC we get a smaller value for p equals 1 so in practice, that would tell us uh, we would want to use an AR1 model, going back to our data, fitting the AR1, and then using that fitted AR1 to get our out-of-sample forecasts.